and this is Communities Live on Sheffield Live Radio 93.2 FM with me, Susie Casson, and we're joined in the studio by Dave Dilner, who's the chair of STAG, and Helen McIlroy, we got it right, from STAGS, which is St- Sheffield Tree Action Group. Been hearing a lot about the tree situation in Sheffield at the moment, so it'd be good to catch up with this. So, first of all, what is STAG and how did it come into being? STAG is Sheffield Tree Action Groups. It came into being uh, la- at the beginning of last year. As a result, I, I came to the uh, to the tree campaign over in Healy when the council wanted to fell 189 trees on Prospect Road, which forms the bottom perimeter of Healy City Farm. They wanted to build a bus lane because they'd got some money they had to use within a certain time frame, needed to find somewhere to use it, so they had this daft scheme for a bus lane. Uh, and to cut a long story short, that proved to be a successful campaign. The trees are still there. Uh, Healy City Farm is still protected from traffic fumes. I became aware towards the end of the campaign that there was another huge focus on Rustlings Road, trying to save their magnificent lime trees, and then aware that there was disquiet in other local areas of the city. I saw the council playing uh, what I consider to be quite despicable divide and rule tactics. So I sat down, I ran off an email, sent it to all these local areas, the people I knew who were active in local campaigns, called them to a meeting and pointed out to them what was happening and from my own experience of how things went in Healy, Uh, said that the best thing we can do is unite to fight, uh, suggested that we form this group called STAG. Hey presto, STAG was born and continues to grow. Yeah, fantastic. So Helen, can I ask you how you first became involved with STAG? Well, it was kind of by chance, really. I happened to be in town um, in summer one day in summer last year, um, and I saw a gathering of people outside the town hall um, and, you know, thought, you know, just thought I'd go and see what was going on. And they were talking about the trees. And from some of the things that were said, I thought, this, you know, this isn't good. They were about to present the petition, the first petition to the council. Um, and I was so sort of taken with what I'd heard outside the, the hall that I went in to listen to the speeches inside. And the more I listened, the more horrified I was, um, you know, to the point that when the tree forum was announced i went along to the first meeting of that became even more horrified and shocked at it all um you know this allegedly bi-monthly tree forum that's actually only happened twice um in summer last year they abandoned it after that for reasons best known to themselves um and then sort of subsequently to that you know i'd got myself on a mailing list and One day got an email saying they're setting up a a tree camp in Aincliffe Park. Come along and join in. So I did. I just grabbed a tent, grabbed a sleeping bag and off I went. (laughs) Camped there for a month. Um, And uh, yeah, the rest is history. I've been sort of sucked into the campaign virtually full time since then. And the things that I've learned about trees is wonderful. The things that I've learned about how the council works is just shocking. Mm. Absolutely shocking. Yeah, absolutely. So can I ask what kind of trees are involved at the moment and where they are? There are quite a few species of trees. Uh, Currently there are, is it 107 or 117 threatened trees in Netheredge? And that's without Salt Lane and Montgomery Road? Yes, so that that is a minimum number. And I, I would just point out that... Nether Edge is, uh, huge parts of Nether Edge lie within conservation areas. This means nothing to Sheffield City Council and their willingness to bend over backwards to facilitate this multinational company, AMI, which is an arm of Ferrovial, uh, raping our city of its trees, uh, claiming to replace when they actually don't. You can't replace, you cannot replace 150 plus year old tree with a tiny little sapling planting species that will never ever achieve the same level of crown and canopy cover when they're all together it the lies that emanate every in every statement from the town hall are just astonishing they truly believe that repeating lies often enough 
They're taking the people of Sheffield for a ride. They say, because we say it, and we say it often enough, it must be true. Why would our council lie to us? I keep being asked. The, the, the thing about this one-to-one -one replacement that, that they're doing um, totally misunderstands the point of the, of the benefits that mature trees give to us. Most of the trees that we're losing are mature. They're large crowned, which means that they give us the best environmental protection. The, the benefits of having trees come from basically the surface area of the leaves. So to, for them to come along and say that, oh yes, for each one of these large ones we take out, we'll put in a, a, a young one, it is not an equivalent at all. It is not an adequate substitution. We are losing the benefit given to us by these mature trees and they cannot be replaced. They will not grow back in our lifetimes, they will not grow back ever to those proportions because they're planting different species. And can we just recap the reason that the council and Amy are giving for the removal of the mature trees? Yeah, they use uh, what they are laughingly calling a tree strategy at the moment which consists of the six Ds and it runs through things like uh, damaging, discriminatory, uh, dead, dying, diseased. I can't remember the other one off the top of my head. I will just point out that STAG are, and the, all the local groups under the STAG banner are, are not and never have uh, tried or wanted to save every single tree in Sheffield. That idea is balmy. We've had the finger pointed at us by certain councillors, council officers, etc., that that's what we're trying to do. It's nonsense. It's very misleading. We recognise that if a tree is dead, dying or diseased, it has to be felled. Because without saying if a tree is unsafe, it has to be felled. But the vast majority of the 4,000 plus trees that they have felled to this point since the PFI contract was instituted have been healthy, mature trees providing environmental benefits to Sheffield at a time when Sheffield has the third highest incidence of childhood respiratory disease in the country. The figures continuing to grow. We're on the danger list. Sheffield has been placed on the danger list for air pollution that trees alleviate. Roadside trees are the ones that provide maximum benefit in terms of capturing, uh, and uh, well, providing oxygen and capturing things like particulate matter, particles uh, and the rest, plus flood alleviation. Then after £32 million pounds of funding to help with flood alleviation at the same time as chopping down over 4,000 trees. There's no joined up thinking here. And sometimes I've scratched my head, I've lain awake at night thinking, is there any thinking at all? Does anybody know what they were doing? We've got people like cabinet member Jack Scott saying, we, if we don't do this now, future generations won't have trees. It's a nonsense. What about this generation? Children are suffering now. Children are dying now in this city. He needs to know what he's talking about. And clearly, every time he opens his mouth, he puts his foot in it. It's got to stop. People need to wake up to what they're telling us. Yeah, absolutely. So the situation's been changing in the past few days. Um, can you update us on the current situation today? What's happening? Well, um, the, the main event of late was what happened on Rustling, Rustling's Road last Thursday uh, when residents were woken at five o'clock by police knocking on their door, asking them to remove cars so that um, the tree fellers who were there in attendance could start on their work. Um, you know, by, by 5.30, um, three residents had been arrested. It's still dark and there are people being called from their beds and if they don't cooperate immediately, they're taken away by the police. This is absolutely outrageous. I mean, it opens a huge can of worms, you know, never mind the fact that eight trees, six of which the independent tree panel, which was set up by the council itself, six of these trees could have been saved. 
three people taken virtually straight from their beds to, to a, a cell. What is going on? Who authorised that operation? Why did the police cooperate? What is Amy doing? What is their role in this? How could they, in order to get their work done, somehow have this exercise orchestrated for them, for their convenience? There are the most terrible questions here that need answering about local governance, about who is in control of our city, because the council, by signing this secret contract, have handed over power to Amy. We as voters and as taxpayers have no control over this, because the council has handed over that control to Amy. We are powerless, and it seems that they are powerless as well. We have got something going on in our city which goes beyond trees. The trees are a huge environmental disaster that we've only touched the surface of in this programme. But what it has revealed is something very, very, very rotten in how the city is governed. And I believe it's a 25-year contract with 25 Amy. 25-year contract. Mm. We're only four years into it. Mm. And this is this pattern is a, of, of uh, voters control the accountability that local authorities have to have to their voters seems to be being repeated across the country this pattern of PFI funding um, you know where a commercial company takes over the role of the local authority seems to be going on across the country it's a direct result of, of you know a wider economic picture we and STAG, of course, are concerned mainly with our trees that we are losing daily, on a daily basis, and we need to stop it. Absolutely. Uh, so, Dave, finally, can I ask you how can people find out more or get involved with STAG? Yep. We have a page on Facebook. If you put in STAG in uppercase, you'll find the page very, very quickly. We also have a hashtag on Twitter, at Chef Tree Action. Uh, the... S for chef, the T for T and the A for action are all uppercase, the rest is lowercase. Uh, come and join us, help us to fight. I will just add that since last Thursday, the outrage not only at losing these trees on Rustlings Road, these healthy, mature trees. And beautiful trees. Yes, absolutely magnificent trees. All the photographs, all the pictures of the action, the, the trees before and after, they're all there. Since last week, we have had now membership of STAG has increased by just a little short of 900 people. 900 new members. People are angry. People are outraged. There is something very rotten 